good gentleman from District 34. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I rise in opposition to this budget as well. It's a $183,000 budget. As the good lady noted, it is the smallest budget that we consider in JFAC. We've already considered dozens of budgets in JFAC with vacant positions uh, without cutting those budgets because sometimes the needs of the office or the needs of the department are, are, are changing. There's turnover. There's sometimes a need to, uh, to leave it vacant and um, get the work done another way for a period of time. Just because there is a vacant position is not the reason to cut the budget. If that were the case, we would be cutting a lot of budgets uh, here in the House. Just yesterday, uh, we, um, many of us here, voted to spend $16,000 on, on office chairs, which is twice the rate of, of other departments. And if you uh, do the simple math on that, that could be considered overspending of $8,000. This budget we're considering right now um, is cutting the lieutenant governor's budget by $7,400. If we're conservative, I think we would cut the office chairs and keep the good employee that is needed from time to time at the, at the lieutenant governor's office. Um, the, uh, the process in this has not been pretty. The uh, lieutenant governor's budget was, was first uh, um, voted out of JFAC, not unanimously, with a, with a bigger cut to it. It was then pulled back to JFAC, and the lieutenant governor was brought back in to uh, talk about her budget again. Um, I'd have to say that the questioning process for that second time was, was uh, not entirely civil. She was accused of things. This has become political. If it were strictly physical, we would not be debating over $7,400. This has become a political process. It does not reflect well on JFAC. It does not reflect well on what's been going on in the Senate. And I encourage your no vote. Thank you.